part of the bomb. Being in the alpha build now, there's a lot to talk about, especially with the new map, Parcel Storm, and a whole new game mode being Obliteration. And if you guys are not aware of what Obliteration is, look at the mini-map right here. You got three objectives for both teams. Both teams have to defend and attack the enemy objective. The simple task is carry the bomb to that objective and destroy it. First one to destroy all three objective is considered the winner of the match. Now in this commentary I'm going to be looking at the weapons, specifically the attachments for the weapon. You can already tell there's a couple of new weapons like the SAR-21, the CZ-805 and the ACE-23. But with that comes the loss of the AN-94 and the loss of the F-2000 moving on from Battlefield 3 to Battlefield 4. Now moving on to the optics of attachments, you can look at the right side and you see that any one of these attachments can affect damage, accuracy, mobility, range, and handling. But keep in mind, these are only scopes, so they won't have any effect on it. And with the scopes, you have a wide range of scopes to choose from, even on the close range to medium range, because you have an option at the top there. But looking closely at the close range, you can see that there's an Iron V scope, which is similar to the Battlefield 3 scope. But there's also the FLIR scope, so I wonder how this is going to play out with Battlefield 4. Now as we move on to the accessories, we can already see at the top there, there's a canted iron sight and a magnifier. This is basically the side scopes you will be able to transition between your main scope and your secondary scope. There's also the flashlight and the tactical light. Now the tactical light is will only turn on when you aim down sight. As for the laser sight, it's similar to what we've seen in Battlefield 3. It's always on, will increase your accuracy, but it gives your position away as you're running and it can blind the enemy at the same time. With the tri-beam, it's a laser with three points to make aiming from the hip easier and temporarily blind enemies. Now the green laser can blind enemies only if shined directly in their eyes and it also increases your hip fire accuracy. As for the laser slash light combo, you can toggle between a light, a tactical light or a laser to fight off the enemies. Now as we move on to the barrels, with the first attachment we see is the muzzle brake. And it's basically a new attachment that we haven't seen before and the attachment is designed to reduce the recoil of a weapon. But at that expense, you're lowering the accuracy of the weapon by increasing the dispersion of the bullets coming out of the weapon's barrel. As for the compensator, it does pretty much the exact same thing. The flash hider will only hide the muzzle flash so you can still be heard. Now the heavy barrel will give you a tighter dispersion pattern, but that increases weight and will also increase your recoil. As for the suppressors, they all pretty much do the same thing. Different designs, but they will hide you on the minimap and suppress your bullet sound. And with that comes at the expense of slower bullet velocity. As we move on to the under barrels, you can already see that there's the bipod and ergo grip. Now the bipod, we all know what it does. You can mount up your weapon when scoping down sight. But with the ergo grip, what it will do is reduce the accuracy penalty when shooting while moving. Now the vertical grip does the exact same thing. As for the angled grip, it reduces the first shot's recoil, making bursts and single shots easier to handle. And in this case, the folding grip does the exact same thing. The potato grip makes recoil covering to normal accuracy faster when coming out of a sprint. And of course, the stubby grip does the same thing as the potato grip. And to top it all off, we've got a paint job to change things up. But overall, you can change any weapon based off of its damage, accuracy, mobility, range, and handling simply from the attachments that you put onto it. And that is phenomenal because that allows the weapons to have a lot more key features to it that allow it to be vital in certain combat situations. Anyway guys, that sums it up for this quick attachment weapon review for Battlefield 4. If you guys did enjoy the video, please do leave a like on the video. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe because there's a lot of awesome content coming out. And I will be coming out with some more Battlefield 4 footage and breaking down a little bit of the little bird for you guys. So anyway, I will see you guys later. And I want to give a thanks to Andrzej because he let me use his Battlefield 4 footage. And that wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for him. So I will see you guys later.